Recently, the U.S. Surgeon General issued an advisory on the youth mental health crisis in America, stating that mental health challenges are the leading cause of disability and poor life outcomes in young people. In fact, up to one in five children ages three to 17 in the U.S. have a mental health challenge. Too many people in mental health distress start to talk about wanting to die or kill themselves. They may talk about feeling empty, hopeless, or having no reason to live. They may talk about great guilt or shame, feeling trapped, or feeling that there are no solutions. They may talk about feeling unbearable pain, emotional pain, or physical pain, or being a burden to others. They may also start to behave erratically, such as acting anxious or agitated, using alcohol or drugs more often, withdrawing from family and friends, or changing their sleeping and eating habits. They may have increased risky behavior, have extreme mood swings, give away possessions, or actually start to say goodbye to family and friends. These are signs that someone is in severe mental distress and needs help immediately. There are five action steps for helping someone in emotional pain. Simply ask, are you thinking about killing yourself? It's not an easy question, but it is a critically important one. There are things you should not say, such as, you're not going to do something stupid, are you? You know, suicide is a selfish act. You're just joking, right? Stay strong, it'll be all right. Keep them safe. Reducing a suicidal person's access to highly lethal items or places is an important part of suicide prevention. You can ask, do you have a plan? Do you have a way to carry out your plan? Be there. Listen carefully and learn what the individual is thinking and feeling. Research suggests acknowledging and talking about suicide may reduce rather than increase suicidal thoughts. Help them connect. The National Suicide Prevention's Lifeline, 1-800-273-TALK, and the Crisis Text Lines number, 741-741, is there for help. You can also help make a connection with a trusted individual like a family member, friend, spiritual advisor, or mental health professional. Stay connected. Staying in touch after a crisis or after being discharged from care can make a difference. Studies have shown the number of suicide death goes down when someone follows up with the at-risk person. If you are a parent and your child has started to have suicidal thoughts, there are things you can do at home to keep your child safe. Keep over-the-counter and prescription medications, cleaning supplies, knives, razors, scissors, lighters, and matches out of the reach of the child. Lock up weapons, such as guns and knives. Avoid leaving the child alone if you are concerned about safety. Isolation is never helpful. Inspect your child's room for self-harming objects under mattresses, in shoes, in clothing, outside the window seals, etc. Always keep any alcohol or illicit drugs away from your children and adolescent. If there are absolute concerns of safety or self-harming behaviors, remove the door off the hinges in your child and adolescent's bedroom. In the day of information at our fingertips, we often go to the internet to find information on mental health and well-being for ourselves or our children. As we search for information, it is important to make a distinction between what is credible on the internet and what is not. These are some credible sites to visit for good information. One place to look is St. Elizabeth's Activating Hope page. From this link, you will find links to credible resources for mental health, suicide prevention, substance use disorder, and ways to promote positive youth development. We are right here. Resources are available in primary care offices within the St. Elizabeth Physicians System. Please talk with your healthcare provider for more options. Together, we are building a better, healthier community.